Now I am going to tell you about the pituitary adenomas. What are the pituitary adenomas? These are the basically benign tumors of interior lobe of the pituitary gland. These are the common between the 35 to 65 years of age. These can be functional and the non-functional. What are functional? Then when produces the clinical signs and symptoms due to the hormonal excess. These are known as functional pituitary adenomas and when there is no clinical signs and symptoms of excess hormone they are non-functional pituitary adenomas they are classified on the basis of hormones they secrete they can be lactotroph adenomas when they produce the prolactin somatotroph adenomas when they produce the growth hormone corticotroph adenomas when they, pr they produce ACTH gonadotroph adenomas when they produce the LH and FSH thyrotroph when they produce the TSH and they can be non-functional. What are monomorphous pluri, plurihormonal adenomas? When the pituitary adenomas consist of distinctive type of cells that produce two hormones like growth hormone and the prolactin from the one cell, they are known as monomorphous plurihormonal adenomas. Adenomas can be microadenomas and the macroadenomas. What are the microadenomas? When they have the when they having the size less than one centimeter, they are known as microadenomas. When they having the size greater than one centimeter, they are known as macroadenomas. What are the genetic abnormalities include? There is a genetic abnormalities in the G protein mutation. G protein. When there is a mutation in the genus, genus. GNAS encode the G protein. What happened if there is a mutation in the GNAS or the G protein? Suppose this is the plasma protein, a plasma membrane, and this is its receptor, and this is the G protein. When the ligand come and bind with this receptor, this receptor, this is going to activate this G protein. How this G protein will be activated? This G protein is present in the form of inactive state because of binding of GDP. When it when the ligand binds to the receptor, this GTP will phosphorylate to the GTP and activate this G protein. This G protein will activate. When this G protein, G, T, G protein activated with the help of GTP, it will stimulate the adenyl cyclase, which result in the formation of the cyclic AMP. And when, what happened if there is mutation? When there is a mutation, there is no need of binding the ligand to the receptor. In the absence of receptor, in the absence of ligand, ligand this G protein will ultimately activate it in the absence of ligand, in the absence of GTP. What this adenyl cyclase will do? This adenyl cyclase will increase the hormone synthesis and the secretion, promote the cellular proliferation. The cyclic AMP is a potent mitogen for the variety of the cells, especially for the corticotroph, somatotroph and the thyrotrophs. There are also other inherited genetic defects, MEN1, cyclin dependent kinase 1B, PRKAR1A, IAIP. What are other abrasions? There are also other abrasions in the cell cycle checkpoints, like there's, well, there can be overexpression of the cycling, cycling D1, mutation in the tumor suppressor gene TP53, or the epigenetic silencing of the retinoblastoma. What type of morphology we will see in the pituitary adenomas? Crossly, we will see the adenomas will be soft and well circumscribed. If it's small, it confined to the cella tersica. So, what is cella tersica? This is the bony part in which the cella tersica lies, like this. Uh, cella, this is the bony part which is known as cella tersica in which the pituitary gland lies. If it's small, it's just confined to the cellar tersica. If it's enlarged, it's 
erode the cellar tarsica as well as the interior clinoid process there is a process present in the front of the pituitary gland interior clinoid process and there is a on the upper there is a staphylomatic cilia when there uh, when there is a when they will erode the this cellar tarsica they can erode the interior clinoid process as well as the diaphragm into the supracellular region and compress the optic chiasm when they compress the optic chiasm they produce the blurring of the vision when the adenomas are invasive basically invasive adenomas are the not in, not encapsulated they infiltrate the cavernous sinus sphenoid sinus dura sinus and the brain itself if it's adin if it's invasive we can see the foci of hemorrhages and the necrosis in histology what we'll see in histology we will see the polygonal cells in the form of a cords like cords or sheets and the supporting connective tissue between these cords is sparse like it will be so small and the cytoplasm of these polygonal cell can be acidophilic basophilic or the chromophobic depend upon the type of secretions how can we differentiate between the adenoma and the normal parenchyma in the normal parenchyma there will be cellular monomorphism and there will be a significant reticular network between the adjacent structures how can we diagnose the pituitary adenomas we can diagnose radiographically radiographically we will see the abnormalities in the cellar tarsica visual field abnormalities increase intracranial pressure pituitary apoplexy endocrine abnormalities now i am going to discuss the individual types of adenomas electrotrophic adenomas it's most common it's third it's present in the 30% of cases it's a prolactin secreting it may be large it may be small now comes to the morphology morphologically it's divided into two it can be sparsely granulated electrotrophic adenomas and densely granula granulated electrotrophic adenomas when i talk about the sparsely granulated electrotrophic adenomas their cytoplasm will be chromophobic and when i talk about the densely granulated electrotrophic adenomas its cytoplasm can be acidophilic there is also some other difference transcription factor pit1 will be present along with the nuclear nucleus and when there is when i talk about the densely granulated electrotrophic adenomas pit1 transcription factor will be diffusely localized in the cytoplasm these electrotrophic adenomas will undergo the dystrophic calcification when there is a small dystroph dystrophic calcification there will be isolated semoma bodies when these extensively calcified they will form the pituitary stones these electrotrophic adenomas will produce a hyperprolactinemia increase prolactin levels what are the clinical course of the electrotrophic adenomas there be there will be amenorrhea in the females absence of the menstrual cycle glycuria the loss of libido infertility it's more common in the women age is age will be 20 to 40 years of age other causes of hyperprolactinemia other than the electrotrophic adenomas can be physiological hyperprolactinemia in the pregnancy dopamine uh, dopamine antagonist that act on the electrotrophic cells electrotrophic hyperplasia because of loss of do dopamine mediated inhibitors mediated inhibition because of damage of the dopaminergic neurons dopamine has has got the inhibitory effect on the electrotrophic cells 
the loss of dam uh, do uh, damage of the dopaminergic neuron is maybe due to the head trauma. So what can be the treatment? We can give the bromocriptine dopaminergic agonist. What, what this dopaminergic agonist will do? This will inhibit the lactotroph cells because it has got the inhibitory effect on the lactotroph cells. What are the somatotroph adenomas? Somatotroph adenomas are the growth hormone secreting. If it's excess in the children, it will cause the gigantism. And if it's excess in the adults, it will cause the acromegaly. Same as the lactotroph adenomas, its morphology is according to the sparsely granulated adenomas and the densely granulated adenomas. When I talk about the sparsely granulated adenomas, it may, its cytoplasm will be chromophobic. And, uh, and if I talk about the densely granulated, it cytoplasm will be acidophilic. In sparsely granulated adenomas, we will see the more poly pleomorphism. There will be a pleomorphism in the cytoplasm in the sparsely granulated adenomas and there will be a monomorphism in, dens in the densely granulated adenomas. If we do the immunofluorescence, there will be an increased GH activity, growth hormone activity in the sparsely granulated adenomas will be focal and the weak. If I talk about the densely granulated adenomas, the growth hormone activity will be strong. What is bihormonal mammosomatotroph? These are basically densely granulated pure somatotroph but the reactivity for the prolactin. What will be the clinical course in the somatotroph adenomas? Excess growth hormone will stimulate the insulin-like growth factor 1. What will this insulin-like insulin growth factor will do? It act on the bones. If it act on the before closure of epiphysis in the children, it will cause the gigantism. It, if it act after the closure of epiphysis in the adults, it will cause the acromegaly. If it causes the gigantism, it results in increased body size disproportional long arms and the long legs. In acromegaly, increased growth in the skin and the soft tissues like thyroid, heart, liver, adrenals and the bones of the hand, feet and face. There is a hyperstosis in the acromegaly. What is hyperstosis? Increased bone density in the spine and the hips. What is prognathism? Enlargement of the jaw result in its protrusion broadening of the lower face. Fingers become the thickened and sausage-like. What are the other effects produced by the excess growth hormone? There will be a gonadal dysfunction, diabetes mellitus, general muscle weakness, hypertension, arthritis, congestive heart failure, increased risk of the GIT cancer. What are corticotroph adenomas? Corticotroph are basically ACTH secreting adenomas which result in adrenal hyper secretions of the cortisol result hypercortisolism, Cushing syndrome. It has got the same morphology as the electrotroph or the somatotroph adenomas. It's classified into densely granulated adenomas and the sparsely granulated adenomas. When I talk about the densely granulated adenomas, it cytoplasm will be basophilic and if I talk about the sparsely granulated adenomas, its cytoplasm will be chromophobic. But what is the difference between morphology of corticotroph adenomas and the somatotroph and lactotroph adenomas? These are these corticotroph adenomas, whether it's densely granulated or sparsely granulated. They will be positive for the periodic acid shift stain. Why it's positive for the periodic acid shift stain? Because carbs in present in the pro opium melanocortin. First, the hormone is synthesized by the pituitary is the pro opio melanocortin which further break down into ACTH and endorphin which is the encaphalins. Now I'm going to discuss what is the difference between the Cushing disease and the Cushing syndrome. 
when there is a hypercortisolism due to the pituitary disease this is known as cushing disease when there is a hypercortisolism due to adrenal gland this is known as cushing syndrome what is nelson syndrome when the large pituitary adenoma develop after the surgical removal for the treatment of the cushing syndrome this is known as nelson syndrome others pituitary adenomas include the gonadotrophin which in what are the gonadotrophs gonadotrophs which release the lh and fsh they found in the middle aged men and the women when enlarged they produce the neurological signs and symptoms what neurological signs and symptoms they will produce impaired vision diplopia headaches pituitary apoplexy decrease energy and the libido in the men because increase level of lh and fsh and decrease level of testosterone amenorrhea and the premenopausal women what can be the diagnosis immuno reactivity gonadotropin alpha subunit and the specific beta fsh and beta lh but what we will see fsh is more prominent in gonadotroph gonadotroph adenomas express the steroidogenic factor sf1 and the gata2 which causes the differentiation of the reproductive cells others include the thyrotrophs and the non functioning what are the non functioning adenomas these consist of the null cells and the silent variants